Hello everyone, we're running a test of some Corbon ammo. Can you believe that? Yes, I did say Corbon. I think this is the first test of a Corbon JHP that I've posted on the channel. In the past, uh, I think I've done a couple of things with the Powerball, but this is the first actual Corbon JHP. And I say JHP because Corbon has a lot of different products in their lineup, and this is strictly just that, JHP, Jack to the Hollow Point. Any event, this is used to some extent by law enforcement, according to what I'm reading online, and a lot of civilians as well. It seems like every time I pick up a gun magazine, which really isn't that often, but uh, currently and also over years past, someone is always writing about Corbon or making a reference to it, but you, uh, at this point in time, don't see a lot of tests on it as far as uh, videos online. But we're going to try to break the mold with that today. I, I promise that I have more coming for you in different calibers. You can see that they are using Starline Brass. I'll go ahead and point that out. Starline generally has a very good reputation. It's used quite a bit by reloaders. Also notice that this brass is tarnished to some extent. And that was the case with every single one of these in the box. I don't know why, but uh, that was the case. Let me zoom in over here in this lighting. Pretty good size hollow point cavity. They are using soft lead. They advertise that they have a thin copper jacket. And you can see it does have some serrations that run about halfway down the nose of the exposed bullet. One other thing that they advertise on their website is velocity. And if you've ever shot any Corbon or researched it, you know that they try to maintain some very high velocities. In fact, on their website, and I'll quote them, it says, Velocity is king. So let's see how close they were. Advertised velocity is 1,150 feet per second. That equates to 485 pounds, foot-pounds rather, of muzzle energy. Now this says Glock 32, 357 SIG, but just drop in a 40 caliber barrel and you have a Glock 23, 4-inch barrel. There are my five shots run through the chronograph from a distance of 15 feet. You got that? Looks pretty good, and it was. When you take the average and add a couple of tenths of a point to it, it comes in at 1,151 feet per second. One other thing that Corbon mentions on their website is that they test all their ammo in ballistic gel with four layers of denim. Guess what? We're going to do that also. We're going to use the sim test media calibrated to match ballistic gel specs shooting from 10 feet, and we're going to use four layers of denim as well. I have a tendency to shoot low and left with 4-inch barrel glocks and faster velocity loads. So I was aiming about right here off a sandbag and look at that. So what a bummer. But it's in that block, which is, by the way, 20 inches in length and weighs 50 pounds. Now I get to go digging through it. I'm going to show you segments of both sides of this track as I was cutting through it. The bullet actually started curving toward the left as I was working through the track. And I had to uh, make some corrections there. This is at the two inch mark exactly where you can really see this starting to take off and expand. This cavity at its widest point is an inch. It doesn't look like that's the case but it's actually underneath here as well and you can see where there's some stress on that media from that uh, impact of that high velocity round. You can see it's cut up under there as well. Some denim carried in that is at the three inch mark and then moving on and out to about the seven inch mark right here is where I lost it. Okay, up to this side of the track, obviously the same thing, about an inch wide. Pretty good amount of energy that was dumped in there, just under 500 pounds actually. Cutting through, and then moving on out, we are at the 8-inch mark now. And I'll tell you this, also on the Corbon website, they say that their bullets penetrate on average 9 to 12 inches. They were not specific to caliber, 40 caliber, uh, especially for this test, or this cartridge. And that's coming in, I've already measured the leading edge right here. You can see it did expand. Leading edge is at 11.75. So it's in their range, 11 and 3 quarters inches. There's a cross section. This is at 2 and a half inches in depth. At its widest point, that appears to be about 3 quarters of an inch. It's certainly less than an inch and pretty clean. That's because the pedals as opposed to sticking out and cutting through the media or tissue 
in a real life scenario. They are tucked underneath the base of the bullet in some cases. You'll get a close up of that in just a moment. There's the high end measuring all the way around, but the average of the expanded pedals is .708. Retained weight, I'm coming in a little heavy, 165.8 grains. I thought the expansion on this was really good. I like the average diameter that we're getting out of this. The bullet held together well. Not a bonded bullet. It's interesting that it flattened out as much as it did all the way down to the core pretty much and I'm pretty certain that that's what accounted for to a large degree this level of penetration. That is how Corbon designed it. So yes it came within their design specs or parameters for penetration which was 9 to 12 inches. But Think about this, and this really didn't hit me until the end of the video. The FBI minimum, which some people take that with a grain of salt, the FBI minimum for penetration is 12 inches. So this bullet is designed to come in at or below what the FBI considers to be a standard for the minimum. And I think they're saying 12 to 18 inches is the range. Now I think I can think of scenarios where you know, 12 inches or less of penetration might be enough, hope it would be enough to stop a threat. But I can also think of many, many more scenarios, including the addition of bone and barriers, where that 12 inches or 11.75 may not be enough. That's what's on my mind at this point, and I'm just hoping you will consider that as well. Thanks for watching.